Hello and welcome. You're listening to CNET UK Podcast. This is episode 388 for Friday the 9th of May 2014. There's an unexpected item in the bagging area. It's a phone from Tesco. Uh, will it clean up on aisle three? Uh, plus, Dixon's and Carphone Warehouse are close to joining forces in a multi-billion pound merger. And we find out how Virgin Media is offering one bill to rule them all. I'm Rich Tannum. Joining me in our London studio this week, Andy Hoyle. Yo, it's me. Good I'm here. You. I mean, I've been here last few weeks actually yeah. last week in particular i was the most here and now i'm i'm here you're here this whole time we basically just turn off the lights in the studio and leave and then we come back and take a dust sheet off you and you're like mm. yeah you i like that sheet it's comfortable feed me <laughs> feels good yeah. Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> this is worse than death those are the, always the two things he requests in that order <laughs> yeah feed me yeah. kill me well you don't want to just... go out on an empty stomach I no. just want to see the sun. And also joining us, uh, Luke Westaway. When you said um, one bill to rule them all, I thought you just found a cool way of saying one billion. I thought you had just been hanging around with some cool financial journalists. Oh, certainly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. They just cleaned one bill in the latest round of one, uh, one Angel. One million cool. You know what's cool? One bill. I one, thought bill <laughs> as in like Cosby. Could yeah, be, yeah. One, you know what's one cool? Cosby to Bill Cobbs. Co- 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 Cobbs. 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 Hey, Cobbs in our sweater, man. So we are, as always, filming the podcast. So check out the video on CNET or youtube.com slash CNET to see us live and in full colour. Andy, why don't you take us on a news cruise? Basically breaking news because it's breaking news when we're recording the podcast. But tomorrow it's old news and boring news. It's uh, Huawei chip has a new flagship phone. It's called the Ascend P7. Oh, oh, Let good. me tell you about this thing because I went in for a hands-on ahead of lunch in Paris. Right. It's a five-inch Android phone. Mm-hmm. It's only 6.5 mil thick. That is really, really skinny. That's a wow. really skinny phone. What's that as thin as? Up. What's some things? It's as thin as something that's six point five mil thick, Luke. It's exactly. Oh how my thin goodness, it is. that's really thin. It's it like really six thin. sheets of paper. Yeah. It's like is six it? sheets of something. Yeah, cardboard. <laughs> it's um, six point five sheets it's, of it's one skinny. mil ply. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's it's quite a bit slimmer than the um, iPhone five, I think. Is it, wow. is it pretty sturdy though? For it is. So thing? yeah. So um, the the previous model that it, it replaces the P six. Um, did have this metal back panel, but it's mm-hmm. now got this glass one. So it's glass front and back. Looks really, really sleek, and it does feel. It feels pretty good. Like, okay. It doesn't feel like you can. You can't flex it in your hand, and you're not going to sit on it and, and bend it or shatter That's it. That's the thing, because I mean, glass is a bit. It's a bit fragile, isn't it? So to have that thin and uh, uh, made of glass would be. But it's yeah. Gorilla Glass Three, the latest <laughs> toughened glass from Corning. Wow. So hopefully, it will apparently put up with scratches. From Three case. gorillas. That's how many gorillas can stand on it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how many. <laughs> that's how many <laughs> gorillas made it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we we had one gorilla working on this, but we we, feel we can make it stronger if we uh, you know combine the intellects of basically. <laughs> this is a pretty uninspiring phone all round. Um, I'll be honest. It's, oh. it's apparently it's a flagship oh. phone, Wait but it's got hopes up. Well, exactly. I thought I'd lead Dashed. you in and really bring you in. That's kind of what I do um, in all aspects of my life before you know pushing you over. Um, okay, it's um, like seduce us. Don't you? you like to woo us a little bit? Before I do. You, it yeah, looks you fine. The but it, it's, it doesn't have the same sort of like processor and, and camera specs and things as um, things like the S5 or um, Sony Xperia Z2. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, the only thing it really has that stands out is an eight megapixel front facing camera. So if you're like me and take eh, just a buttload of selfies, yeah. then this is actually probably gonna be pretty or good. Or a load of butt selfies. <laughs> or a load of butt <laughs> selfies. Yeah, just as long as you get the angle right, you can... You t- can't get the angle wrong with a butt selfie. <laughs> no, yeah. It's true. Um, yeah, so um, what Huawei hasn't yet said, or at least at the time of recording the podcast, hasn't said, is how much it's going to cost. Mm. Now, realistically, I think if this is much more than £300, it's kind of dead on arrival. Because okay. um, it just doesn't it doesn't compete, and especially not, it doesn't have the luxury appeal of the S5 or Sony or the HTC One. Um, so it's really going to need to compete on price. Okay, but if they keep, well, keep the cost down, it's a kind of uh, it's a four G phone. It's a it is four G, yeah, and phone, it's got some it, you know it has some decent things, and the screen mm. looks looks fine. Although um, I don't like Huawei's software that it puts on its phones. Um, I think it's a bit clunky and awkward to use. What's that called? It's called the Motion UI Luke. That's right. And um, I think it's just a little bit awkward and just not as nice as basically any other Android interface and nowhere near as nice as stock Android, okay. which I'd like to see um, on board. Damn it. Well, we um, shall see. We yeah. shall see. 
Well, look out for uh, first take hands-on previews, and we've got photos and videos. Is that right? All that is oh, already see. online now. CNET.com. There now. That's the SNP7. So, speaking of uh, of a possible new high-end phone. Yeah. So on. Tesco has been talking about its upcoming mobile treats. Mm. Um, unsurprisingly, we've got a new Huddle tablet on the way. Huddle uh, two. Cool. Huddle two. I think Google. that is surprising actually, because it, the the Huddle seemed like the kind of thing mm. that they would make one of as a sort of experiment sure. and no one would buy one and they, they wouldn't try again. So, well, you know, I think, I think it's cool that they're making a sequel. You know, well, there are pe lots of people have bought them. Yeah, well, the yeah. experiment was a success. Mm. Well, yeah, exactly, that's great. But um, there are loads of companies tried smartphones and tablets before, like non-technology companies. Mm. Mm. You know, like Tosh Argos. Toshiba doesn't really try with tablets <laughs> anymore. So, you know, for Tesco to be able to make it... Well, I think that's the thing. Tesco being... A trusted supermarket and it has tablets well, at point of sale and things. <laughs> well, like you know, I mean, um, I think they've got just such a bigger platform to launch something like this from Absolutely, than, yeah. than and, anyone else. And the price as well. You can't and argue the, with that the price. price. Can't yeah. argue with the price. So, so, um, so yeah, it's done really well. I mean, they might as well have kept it in the bakery aisle because it's been selling like hotcakes. Whoa! <laughs> this guy. So. Um, but even more exciting that a speaking to the BBC, Tesco boss Philip Clark said that there will also be a phone um, arriving what? sometime later this year. The um, Hoodle phone? To us. Yes, and apparently this phone is going to have much higher end specs than mm. the, the Hoodle. Um, more akin to the Galaxy S5, so proper that's, top that's the end rumor, yeah. stuff. Now that's, I think, wow. um, potentially a bit of a, a risky move by by Tesco. The mm. Huddle did has done so well because it's um, low end specs, dual core processor, and you know only fair screen. Yeah, has meant that it can sell for about 100 pounds, I think, or even 80 pounds. I it's, think if you've yeah, got, um, and if you've got a club card, it's it's just comes down to like 60 or something. Ridiculous. Yeah, it's like so really cheap. really cheap. So you think that maybe the Tesco phone rep is Tesco flying too close to the sun? Really, really like, reaching. Yeah, exactly. On on wings made of phone, but the wings <laughs> joined to the arms with melting wax. Uh, that's that's an analogy, people. That's some that's some mythology. It's what right we there. do in journalism. <laughs> Just painted so. you a word picture. There. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a Tesco slash Icarus pun to go for, but um. I don't think there's one to be had. Well, so, so I mean, the idea of this is Tesco uh, has, has sort of, uh, apparently has said that they're going to um, they're going to you know keep the cost down on this one. So while it'll have specs that will compare to the S5, mm. that's the the rumor. That will also it won't have an S5 type price tag. Wow. I will believe that very much when I see it. Mm, exactly. um, well, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, you. Well, you, thanks. That's, that's yeah. the right time to believe <laughs> things. <laughs> that's true, yeah. Do not believe it before. You have, <laughs> um, you have learned to understand the evidence of believe you at the evidence of your own eyes. That's yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, we've heard things like this before, and, and Samsung aren't just whacking on a, a massively. Inflated price for the sake of it, it, it will. It does try and keep its prices fairly competitive, but still making enough profit. And mm. I don't really know how yeah. Tesco, as a supermarket rather than an global electronics giant, mm. will be able to do the same thing for cheaper. Hard it'll to compete be, with Samsung. Absolutely. Scale. It, it'll be interesting to know who is their manufacturer, who's actually making the phone. Almost certainly be someone like Huawei, ZTE. Mm. Um, yeah. That's almost certainly be Huawei or ZTE. Yeah, right. I mean, it depends on what it's talking. If it, if it means maybe it'll have a full HD display and a quad core processor. Um, yeah, those, those, those things are, are cheap. So you can get those. Yeah, things like the um, well, the, the P7 has that, and the P um, I think uh, Huawei's G6 mm. um, has um, a you know, fairly decent processor. I don't think the screen's full HD, but it, it's fine, and you can get that really cheap. I think about 100 pounds. Okay. Um, so maybe that's the sort of things they're talking. I, I we're not going to be seeing. 2.5 gig quad core processors. We're not going to be seeing these amazing dis displays and 20 megapixel sure. cameras. Um, things like that actually compete with the S5. Mm. There's just no way. Okay, but well, good well, luck to them. I'd like to see yeah. them try. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, maybe one of those vanilla cream crowns to go with it because they're mm -hmm. really nice. Right. Other tasty snacks treats are available. They are, but as before, Tesco's are best. <laughs> <laughs> so just. Just go for this. I like how you're aiming high with your product placement attempts there. That's good. Yeah. Okay, and, and um, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. And also speaking of other British shops that are that are around, uh, Dixons and Carphone Warehouse. Yeah, they have some news. They are apparently going to merge. And for no. audio audio listeners, I did the interlaced fingers yeah. hand gesture to indicate emerging there. Mm -hmm. I think uh, visually that that hit the spot. Yep. But I'm not sure my audio description is working. That's a powerful so visual well. metaphor. So yeah. I'll carry on with the news. Mm. Um, He's painting a picture with hands, yeah. which actually is the traditional way to paint a picture. <laughs> <laughs> but funny. I have found actually some pretty 
Well, frankly, pretty blue ways of doing it, and that's why I'm no longer allowed in the library. Anyway, um, Dick Stones at Carfang Warehouse, they are going to join, apparently, mm -hmm. um, although it's yet to be officially confirmed, mm -hmm. um, for £3.7 billion. Pounds. Oh. That's how much they're going to come together for. But um, there, are, there are few enough high street shops left in the UK without them merging. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, We've well, already know. got rid of... Um, what have we got rid of? Curry's, Comet. is that gone? Com Comet. Comet. Comet's gone. Curry's, Comet's gone. Curry's is part of... Um, uh, the Dixon's, Dixon's, Dixon's thing. BC so, so, World. So Dixon's They're retail. already part of one big group. Yeah, Dixon's and BC World and Curry's is already one big thing. Well, so yeah. D Dixon's Retail, it used to be called DSG, is, uh, is now Curry's and BC World. The only place you'll actually see a, a, a shop called Dixon's is in an airport. That's Dixon's Travel. You don't actually see them on the high street anymore. It's all Curry's and BC World. Oh, really? But, it's um, just but, yeah. that simple, folks. Yeah. I thought, I th no, there's, there's a Dixon's in Ealing Broadway. Mm, mm. I think you'll find there isn't. Um, Unless it's managed to like escape some, there is. Of, I was, some kind I was, of reform. I walked past it the other day because I was looking Dixons. for a SIM card adapter. Every time the Dixons retail oh, boss walks think, past, they put up the Dixons sign. They, they rebranded Dixons. Was it a Curry's, Curry's Digital? Digital. Yeah, yeah, maybe they, that was it. So that, that you don't oh, actually, yeah, of course, there's Curry's Digital. <laughs> it's just that simple. I don't see what's so complicated yeah, about really, it. Yeah. Dixons Retail owns Curry's and PC World, then Dixons and Airports, and, yeah, you know, yeah, it's perfectly simple. Curry's Digital and, and somewhere else. You know, this is obviously, uh, so that's basically all the shops on the high street. Curry's PC World, yes. Pat Manger, Carphone Warehouse, phones for you. Yeah, uh, and a billion hairdressers and estate agents. Yeah, and that's it. That's all you get on. Uh, that's all you get on high streets these days. That's mm -hmm. all that's left. Don't forget so, about all the muggers. <laughs> all the muggers. <laughs> they, 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 it, it's it's a golden era for mugging. Have you been to Brixton again? Is that? What's I've been to Brixton again. <laughs> um, Brixton isn't that bad. Anyway, so yeah, so uh, decent couple. Of, so yeah, I mean, uh, Carphone Warehouse I think has something like eight hundred shops in this country. Yeah, it's a lot. Right. And Dixon's has more than five hundred. Okay. So we're looking at a lot of shops already. So when mm. they join forces, that's a big. I mean, you know, the, surely some Monop the Monopolies Commission is going to have to is going to want to have a chat about. Well, this. the Monopolies yeah. Commission is actually owned by uh, Dixon's Waddington. retail group. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they've they've rebranded from the, <laughs> the Tandy. Yeah. <laughs> Tandy Digital is actually the um, Monopolies Commission. Rumbelows. Well, that's yeah. it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man, Tandy's. Remember Tandy's? I, used, I got my first metal detector from there. I say, I say first. My first, <laughs> first, my first and only. I've not ever, I've not ever, never had a new one. You never really forget your one. first metal detector. When you say that, was that actually your first metal detector or was it my first metal detector? No, it was, it was, it was quite, um, it was like quite an expensive, one. like, sort of, you know, amateur one. It wasn't like one of those blue yeah, plastic yeah. ones. It was quite a good an one. An expensive got it for amateur detector. Yeah, yeah. and we, ne we never found anything, but it was really great to take it on walks around um, parts of Rotherham where we'd find things like uh, bottle caps instead of discarded knives. You know, okay. it's great. <laughs> That's the posh part. Yeah, the posh so, part of Rotherham. <laughs> lovely. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this is the thing. There's no one else's comet. Best Buy failed completely to even establish a foothold here. You know, yeah. Everyone else oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's Maplin. I mean, who, who well, was lovely Maplin. But the last but, bastion. But, Hooray but, for Maplin. Dixon's own Maplin. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I thought Maplin was part of Dixon's group. I don't believe so. I could be wrong. I mean, Dixon's group owns everything else. That would, uh, but yeah, I mean, so, that might be true. Yeah, so I think the government's probably going to have a look at this, but it's, uh, they're going to be equal partners. And uh, one thing that, that is kind of some good news, I think, that's coming out of this is the fact that uh, because they're very different shops, right. both technology shops, but um, because Carphone Warehouse is, is, is focused so much on mobile devices and uh, uh, Dixon's is um, and, and Curry's and PC World are focused on kind of like broad technology, there isn't a lot of overlap in terms of their, their shops and stock. So hopefully we won't be seeing uh, job losses and shops yeah, disappearing. Right. So that would be that would be a good thing. You Maplin know what? is not part of Dixon's group. What? Standing alone, <laughs> it's like the toy shop in Home Alone yeah. too, acting as the massive middle finger to Curry, <laughs> <laughs> um, and to anyone who yeah. wants to buy like yeah. anything other than mm. bits of LED. I went <laughs> in uh, to again going back to my search for a SIM card adapter, and Maplin tried to sell me a micro SIM to regular SIM card adapter for eight pounds. I just laughed. It's just a piece of plastic. Right. It, but it, did they offer to bundle it with one of those big black disco ball orbs? No, but a two foot high um, remote control car. Yeah. That, that, that yes. got, got around for no reason. Uh, no, it was ridiculous. Okay. What I would say finally about this story is I hope Carphone Warehouse don't change their name, even though their name is stupid. And outdated. Uh, so this and is outdated. actually, yeah, it's a good point. This, I like it. They're gonna, so the, technically the, the parent company is going to be called... I can't talk now on a car phone. <laughs> it's a warehouse of car phones. <laughs> How many car phones do you need? A house full? A bungalow full? <laughs> a boat full? No. It's a warehouse of car phones. A car phone 
warehouse. It's I think a they shame should bring back the car phone. In fact, yeah, yeah they should bring back Mobley as well. Mm. Do you remember Mobley, the little mobile phone in the ads? <laughs> you see, it's actually, into a smartphone hanger because then it's new and bigger. Mm. Yeah, that's true. So, mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, actually, this is um, a little known fact. It was actually started by uh, a guy called uh, called Michael Coffney. And uh, the people are pronouncing his name wrong for years, old, old, uh, old Mr. Carthy. You nearly, you nearly had me there. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we're going to Warhouse. We That's staying, what they should uh, change it to. We'll be staying um, tuned for more news on this because this is only a bit of a bit of a breaking thing from Sky, and so we're not entirely sure. Um, whether this is official or whether it's going ahead. So I, far, neither company has given an official statement. I, I, did, so I did speak to a spokesperson from uh, Carfin Warehouse earlier. He did say that discussions are ongoing, which yeah. sounds pretty wow. definite, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. at this point. Okay. So, yeah, we'll see. Things will happen. Anyway, mm. shall I move on? Yes, absolutely. I'm going to move on to Virgin Media. Okay. So what Virgin Media is doing mm. is combining your broadband, your landline, your TV, and your mobile bills all into one easy to pay Consolidated <laughs> into, one bill. Into, into one giant bill. Into one giant giant bill. bill. When we add it all together, it's so easy to add extra <laughs> charges. Yeah. It all slips yeah. through the cracks. We've already got your details and anyway. Yeah, you instead, instead of sort of like um, four different people slapping you in the face like, gently each month, then uh, yeah. one yeah. person comes in. And Richard just, like, Branson just, just, yeah, just barrels in. Comes in and just kicks the crap out of you. <laughs> 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 Exactly. So yeah, so um, broadband, landline, TV, and mobile all in one in one go. They're, so they're sort of the first people to do this. Yeah, it is, mm. and it's great because I, for one, am always perpetually confused by having to pay different bills for the same thing over direct debit that That's I never confusing. even see. Yeah. Massively confusing. Mm. So thank How you, have we managed? thank you, Virgin, for taking all my main stresses out of my life. So the new big bundles, combined as they're called, capital B's there. Mm -hmm. uh, Combine yeah, your TV service and broadband and landline mobile into 18-month deals. Um, oh, what? It's known as quad play. And uh, Virgin, <laughs> BT and Sky, they have triple play already for landline TV and broadband. Mm -hmm. But right. Virgin is first to add mobiles into this as well. Yeah, quad so play, big wrote. bundle. So, so this is kind of, uh, so, so Jason was talking about this because he's been on Virgin Media. And what they've kind of, they've, they've always kind of offered you a bit. They've all sort of done it before because they've offered existing customers uh, a discount on mobile. But this is the first time it's going to be kind of opened up to uh, to new customers. So uh, it's, it's, it's sort of something they've been doing for a little while, but they've kind of rebranded it. And now they've got these specific deals, the Big Kahuna and the Big Bang. Um, great names, by great, the way. Great names, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And they cost uh, £35 or £50, but you do also have to include line rental on top of that, so it's actually more like... Oh, oh line what? rental. Why is line rental still a thing? Exactly. Line rental, I hate line rental. Well, well because, people... of, because of BT open reach, right? That's what line rental is. So whenever you move house, line rental is like mm. is the, the thing you never remember. Mm. It's like finding a nail in your cake or something. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, I've eaten a nail now. He's probably like, oh, gonna die. forgot I put that nail in there when I was baking my cake. Why do I keep on doing it? <laughs> I've eaten a nail, but it's not the worst thing that happened to me today. The worst thing that happened to me today was finding out I had to pay line rental. Yeah, nightmare. <laughs> I'll swallow a whole pack of nails. I'm actually relatively <laughs> Off I go down to line. Wix, part of Dixon's group. <laughs> <laughs> eating this nail into uh, perspective. Why do so, I yeah. keep the flower anyway. with the nails? So, so, so what do you um, think? I mean, do you think it's worth combining things like this to... I think it is. If it's, if it's, um, if you are... <laughs> Sorry, I didn't really heard that. <laughs> Did I miss out on a pun? I no, 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 no. Um, I think it is. If it's, if it's really offering something um, extra or if by consolidating all these things mm. into one easy payment, as all those daytime TV debt adverts tell you, <laughs> if it will sort of reduce your, your yeah. monthly outgoings, mm. which um, it, I, I, we haven't done the nitty gritty because the, it's... It, Combine so many different plans, it's actually quite difficult to work out exactly whether you're saving money. But mm. I suppose it does mean that you just go, it's one one place, you get one bill. I guess if you're signing up as a new customer, that's probably a really simple way to do it. Mm. As you said, Luke, if you are moving into a new house and you don't want to be thinking, okay, I'm going to get my TV from here, and okay, I'll get B broadband, and I'm going to get my phone from three, and you have all these different plans and all these different things, you can just go, yep. Yeah, Virgin, have it all. I'll tell you what makes me nervous about this mm. is that it doesn't really feel like you're spreading the risk. I know that these are all different like services offered by different bits of Virgin, mm. and because it, like if your TV breaks, it doesn't mean your broadband will, for example. Sure. But uh, I, I don't often hear good things about Virgin Media's customer service. Okay. Um, so I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I, I'd be. Uh, this feels a bit all the eggs in one. 35 from 35 pound a month basket it is a bit tricky i think price wise you know tv costs a lot of money when you pay for tv if you want to get tv from virgin bt and sky it costs quite a lot of money anyway mm. and people are already spending you know uh, if, if you've got a phone especially if it's a subsidized contract then you're probably going to be spending about 30 quid anyway so i don't know why tv is still so expensive i yeah, think that's the reason part of the reason why 
TV subscriptions are, are declining and, and, mm. and on-demand services and Netflix and things is so it's getting so high. Netflix is still six pounds a month for all of that. Mm. And yet it's, what, 50 pounds a month, I think, for Virgin's top TV package? Sky, like the sky is really expensive yeah. as well, especially it, if you go for all the, all the you know, extra stuff. If you want it's HD and not money. movies, you're looking at paying, I think, like 31 pounds a month or something for Sky? Mm. On the movies, um, on like pay-per-view as well, that you pay, is that still a thing? Uh, no, there's, there's there's a there's like a movies package which gets you all the all of their sorts of free movies and then they have more recent movies which are on pay per view, mm. which yeah. is actually good. I like I watch I watch them off yeah. Sky, I watch them every now and again. Well, One thing, thing it doesn't include on the what mobile ifs? side is uh, is handsets. So the mobile plan they're all um, SIM only. Mm. So what? you will still need to get your own phone on top of that, which. If you're See, getting what? something like the Sony Xperia Z2, boom, £600 on top of that. Get yourself a Tesco phone when that comes out. Save a bit of cash, why not? Yep. Speaking of uh, spending loads of money and having extravagant things. Yeah, Etihad. They do planes, Rich. Mm. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right, is that it? Anyway, moving on to yeah. the feedback. <laughs> oh, no, wait, there's more. Uh, yes, but Etihad wait. has a new way of flying, and it's proper flying in style. None of this cattle glass, none of this... Uh, excuse me, sir. Can you move your knees? They're in my back. That's the pilot. That's the, <laughs> that's the pilot. That? The pilot, because he needs right. a space, and I'm in the cabin. He doesn't like yeah. me in there. Anyway, it's called the Can't Residence. Is their new way of flying, me. and this is a three-room cabin um, that's decked out. It's super luxurious. What we've got in there, we've got 125 square feet um, for single or double occupancy. You've got a reclining sofa with a retractable ottoman, electrically retractable ottoman, because we all need that. That's in the living room. Mm. We've got a six foot bed in the bedroom and a full height shower in the ensuite bathroom. This is pretty good, right? <laughs> I say full height shower, like that's a benefit. We've also... When have you ever been in a non full height shower? Well, I... When have you ever had to settle for a shower I, I where in, you've in had some... to like kneel down in some and other like, crawl planes, in? Though. Well, this, this is the thing. In so some in other planes. Other, in another plane in like club class and things, because they have limited um, height restrictions, so you can't do yeah. it. Or, so or it, it's for sitting showers. Oh, wow. Well. In order to actually fit in a full height shower for the, the one person who's paid for it, everybody else has to kneel. Yeah, know? everyone yeah. else has to <laughs> sort yeah. of sit like this. They've had to knock a little bit off. Yeah, the quite the apart from the, the water tank as well that it needs. If you want a long shower, yeah. you're in there for like 15 minutes. Yeah. Or, or I want to know how long they can keep the water hot for, because, you know. Yeah, sorry, right things. Yeah. I guess they probably put the water, like just bottles of Evian around the jets, and mm. it just heats up and takes out. Anyway, um, this also comes with a 32 inch TV, um, and that's got. Um, it's not that big. No, yeah. but it. I'm not impressed by any of this. But it's far bigger a than. A full height shower? <laughs> oh my goodness. But it has there won't be one of those where I'm going. HDMI <laughs> port so you can plug in PS4 and things on there, like Xbox One. Nice. I mean, you have to take one with you because it doesn't actually come with a console. And how much does this cost? Does it come with a console? No, but it has a private butler. And, uh, and a private chef. Can the butler get me an Xbox? <laughs> Probably, Can the yeah, butler the, perform the, the, the services am, on I, Xbox? Can you put a disc in his mouth and he'll plug himself <laughs> into the TV? It, before, well, before you fly, the butler goes down to Dixon's Travel in the airport and yeah. buys you an Xbox. Mm, well, Etihad obviously <laughs> is a subsidiary of <laughs> Curry's Digital Dixon's. Mm. So. Now, Etihad didn't list in its big, uh, on its big page how much this costs, but I, took a, I tried to book a flight from London to Dubai yeah. in... Uh, March 2015, because this isn't launched until 2015, mm -hmm. and um, it cost almost £13,000 for a single from London to Dubai. Wow! To use this, that's a lot of money for a I single. Hope you hit cancel before that. For uh, before that went into. Mind your, you, yeah. when you're stood up in that shower, Actually, yeah. just like feel, it'll all have been worth yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling worth it. the sensation of being in yeah. a shower without being bent double, <laughs> drawn up to your full mm. height. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I am terrified. Terrifying you in your glory. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I'm terrified of flying, completely <laughs> petrified. I hate it. I never want to fly again, but I have to. Mm. But I reckon that if I was in this, I could probably cope with flying a little easier yeah, no, than I can. Because I flew with Etihad um, to Abu Dhabi last year, and it was fine. I was in there. Um, but the shower economy. was still <laughs> yeah, 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 I had to crash down in the shower. And the butler, fine, bit of an attitude. <laughs> yeah. I, actually, no, I just took a lot of uh, drugs and alcohol to ease my, ease my trip. Legal ones, the doctor gave me them. We don't recommend that. Um, Folks, no, 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 it's bad, but Absolutely. honestly, it was fine because I just watched Viva La Bam the whole trip. That sounds <laughs> That's awful. Yeah, it does. That sounds like the worst. <laughs> yeah, but when you're when drunk. You're, on an airplane, and you're spaced out on a, on, a, on a comfortable <laughs> I had two blankets and two pillows because the seat next to me was empty. Nice, that's, really. that's always yeah, good. That sounds good. Helped. 
Anyway, I'm going to move on to some Star Wars news. Oh, thank yeah. goodness. This is great for people who like Star Wars Episode Seven, yep. which is going to be coming out in 2015, I believe. Mm -hmm. 2016? December 2015. Next year. So almost 2016. I was, yep. Yeah, pretty I was close. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> according to Ain't It Cool News, which yeah. you tell me before we started recording, is a trusted source on movie things. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty reputable. That's yeah. cool. That's fine. I don't. I just, <laughs> well, no, reputable. It's just that I don't know. I don't know movies, yeah. and I don't know this this sort of thing. So okay. about you sound very movie. suspicious. I was. You sound really because unhappy. Because they quoted a source who simply wished to be named Colonel Mustard. Right. Now, when I have well, he's sources, a military man. I mean, he's clearly. He <laughs> just, you really seriously trust him. That is just his Honestly. name. He is you a colonel. He you is don't, Jack Mustard. Exactly. You don't achieve the rank of colonel. <laughs> um, you know, without knowing what's well, correct Star Wars info. They, because on the on um, when we wrote this story, we we didn't we shortened Colonel to C O L dot mustard. I thought they were shortening <laughs> like Coleman's Coleman. mustard. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, according to Coleman's mustard, the official title for Episode Seven is going to be, or is likely to be, yes. yep. the Ancient Fear. Oh. Now, I Ooh. I quite liked the sound of that until Rich you pointed out that it's kind of a play on a New Hope. Yeah, it's where, flipping it around. Yeah, but that made me think that they were just sort of sat around in that black and white photo with it saying, like, <laughs> well, what would be like New Hope? <gasps> the opposite. The Ooh. opposite, yeah. Like, it's... if they'd come up with Ancient Fear, not from thinking of it as a like a point of let's make it the opposite of a New Hope. Mm. I'd like that. And then well, will, like, will they all be opposites? It'll like, be like the Empire stays in. Well, it won't be the Empire, <laughs> it'll be like the individual. <laughs> yeah. The individual meekly surrenders, <laughs> and the third one. Um, the Sith go back. <laughs> yeah, Sith go home. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, we'll keep an eye on that one. But uh, there you go. And <laughs> finally, go back. okay, finally, yes, um, it's dinosaur news dinosaur time. News. Dinosaur news. This Luke's week in favorite news. new section. <laughs> Dino news. He is very happy about this. We have a new species of di dinosaur that has apparently been discovered in China, and it's called Pinocchio Rex. Oh. Brilliant, oh. not least because Rex is the name of Luke's cat. Yes, that's who right. I cuddled right. on Sunday night. There you stand over the newly unveiled fossil with the chance to name a new species <laughs> of tyrannosaur. Yeah. And all you can think is that it's got a funny nose, so let's call it Pinocchio. <laughs> well, that's not a, that's a, that's a nickname, isn't it? <laughs> Why I mean, would it's, it's have a real name? It does, but I'm not going to try and pronounce it because I didn't write it, it down. It, uh, I believe it's uh, it was found in the Chinese city of of Guangzhou. G Ganzhou. Ganzhou. Okay. I think it's Ganzhou. So it's Ganzhousaurus, basically. I think. Oh, I saw, I saw like a really long Latin name. Which yeah, was that, that, was my, that was my attempt at it. It's clearly got a bunch of names. Um, mm. Oh, um, formerly named, yeah. yeah. Sinensis? Yeah, Sinensis. yeah. you go for that. W why couldn't they just call it like Pinocchio yeah. Rex. And the reason they've called it that is because it has, like you said, it's got a, uh, what, what, so how did you describe it earlier? An elongated... An elon well, I was just reading from the, the new story before, but uh, yeah, it's got like an elongated uh, sort of... Snout. Um, snout, yeah. yeah. And is there anything distinctive about the snout? Uh, it gets longer when it lies. <laughs> <laughs> Get, it gets longer when How it lies beneath the soil for millions of years. <laughs> nice. Uh, I like good. that. Very good, very good. Uh, yeah. yeah, but it's it's sort of supposed to be smaller than a, a T-Rex mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. kind of maybe a bit like scrappier. Yeah. It's got a fun it's got a funny shaped head obviously. Is it a cool 90s T-Rex? <laughs> Basically, it's I imagine T-Rex with a back, shades. Yeah, with a backwards baseball cap <laughs> and a surfboard. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's what we're dealing with here. Skating around. <laughs> so <laughs> the Schnotosaurus fossil was so well preserved because apparently soon after it died, the animal was buried with dirt. See, they actually it gave it a funeral. Protected from it's, erosive yeah. water. Right, okay. that's, mm. um, and according to National Geographic, only two fossilised tyrannosaurs with long sights have ever been found. And with such a scarce fossil record, sinus, si scientists... Scientists. Didn't know whether these two represented a new class of dinosaur or were instead young tyrannosaurs that hadn't grown into their adult snouts. That's right. That's so, brilliant. yeah, this tells us something not only about the new species and mm. clears that up, but it also um, uh, tells us that we, we don't have to worry about young tyrannosaurs uh, having, you know, long snouts. Oh, thank okay. God. <laughs> so, yeah. really brilliant. Really really when will I grow into my adult snout? <laughs> <laughs> I, love the fact um, that, I love the fact that... Be patient. That, 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 ...that so many dinosaurs that we think we know about are completely wrong because people have sort of dug up these bones and kind of gone, well, this yeah. has, like, 
legs and some horns, and let's just put all this stuff together, and it's a really weird-looking dinosaur. <laughs> so Instead of going, maybe there's two dinosaurs here. Maybe there's just, well, maybe there's just two dinosaurs. Yeah. You know. Well, who, you were talking about uh, a chap earlier on who uh, influenced the early history of dinosaurs. Who should, yes. People should look in, into this guy. That's right. A uh, very interesting figure, uh, Richard Owen, who mm-hmm. is the man who founded the Natural History Museum, I believe, and was also instrumental in the Crystal Palace Park dinosaurs. If you've okay. been to London, go around there. You should. It's very good. But... Um, uh, all the dinosaurs that he did were wrong. They're all the wrong <laughs> shape. And he was like a famously uh, controversial and curmudgeonly man who was really sort of... Right. Uh, so uh, not only did he come up with these dinosaurs which turned out to be wrong, when other yeah. people discovered the correct dinosaurs, he, he got, like, vicious, them. viciously defended, it, smeared his rivals. Mm. Uh, so Excuse we were reading on Wikipedia anyway. Yeah, it so may be that the Wikipedia article was written by the dis- uh, descendants of the people who he discredited. Of the dinosaurs. Of, of the, the, of the, the dinosaurs, dinosaurs yeah. upset by their treatment. Um, but yeah, what, what I think is amazing is that loads of the dinosaur species that we know mm. um, are just like one bone. So it's like, not like there's a dinosaur that's just one bone. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be pretty amazing. I don't remember seeing that one in Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very, they're very small. <laughs> you, you've got to look at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> yeah, there's just not a particularly exciting chase sequence when there's just like this little tiny bone. Yeah, it's just a bone. Around. Wasn't that just Richard Attenborough beating Jeff Goldblum with a shin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. You know when this happens and when they find it, do they report it as breaking news? Because it's pretty old. Right. Yeah. So like, Spoiler oh, alert. is this happening? Oh, yeah. quick! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dinosaurs like what? Been around for millions of years. Yeah, I've been here. I've been here so long. Not you guys are really late with this story. <laughs> Speaking of uh, hanging around for millions of years, I think it's time that we uh, moved on. So why don't we hear what you guys have been saying in this week's feedback? Facebook. Checking into places. David Byrne says, I asked a while back about phones being marketed for battery life just to say, thanks for your feedback. I ended up with a Sony Z2. It's 3200 milliamp hour battery. It lasts me two days on average. It's what yes. we do, David. It's what we do. Yeah. Uh, well, that's cool. That's pretty impressive, actually. Yeah, yeah two fun. days. What a good choice of phone there, David Byrne. <laughs> nice one, David. Hope you read my review. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stephen Harris says, what are the best wired headphones, mainly for gaming, for under £50? Uh, Stephen Sings, we're not sure whether you sort of mean like in-ear headphones or on-ear headphones. Or like um, a headset with mic for, for oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of thing. I'm going to... Or around the ear headphones. Or, or around... Or sort of in the vague area of the ear headphones. <laughs> yeah, or... near-to-ear headphones. <laughs> um, so sorry about this, Stephen, but I have to give you some generic advice, which is to go to cnet.com slash topics slash headphones slash best dash headphones uh, because there we've actually got lots of different roundups mm. of all uh, including like best cheap ones best ones that mm. do this best ones that do that so um, Absolutely. You search, search for best yeah. headphones and you'll be able to pop yeah. onto Amazon as well Turtle Beach um, do some dedicated like gaming headsets with the microphone and things and you can get some cheap ones so have a Google right. around alright Moji Shanushi says why the CNET UK app uh, why is the CNET UK app stopped working even um, seeing that you get app has stopped working because uh, we kind of turned it off. We sort of stopped working on the <laughs> website that makes that app. So, so, what, so yeah, what you need to do is you need to download. So you've downloaded the new one. Edition switching is coming pretty soon, so you'll be able to just focus on UK news. We know this has been a big deal for you guys, and we thanks very much for your support from uh, following the UK podcast and the UK news and all that kind of stuff. Stick we're going to continue to keep doing that. We're just uh, we're kind of like getting it all so it all works properly. Yeah, and the app is definitely on the list. So if you download the Cena app, the, um, that will that will have the edition switching, and also you can use the web version, which is pretty tidy. Yeah. Since our redesign, if you just want to fire up um, exactly, you know, and if you click on browser. Then, choice. Then, then you'll get your UK news. And if there's anything at all that we can do together in Vine form to help make up for this, <laughs> yeah. do let us know yeah. and we will do our very best to film that Vine yeah. and send it to you. We'll do anything within reason and some things actually that are unreasonable. So yeah. yeah, and also illegal. Yeah, I, just, I, I suspect it's going to end badly, but there you go. Anyway. Cool. Uh, all right. Uh, so Razmara says, any news about the Galaxy Note 4? Oh my goodness, so impatient. We, why, why? Is that Aoife? Is it Note 4? Why? Yeah, yeah. Aoife yeah, Aoife. in September. Mm. September, early September, they'll be, it'll be even bigger and it'll be um, even Galaxy Noteier. It'll be much more the same as ever. It'll yeah. be S Pennier. It'll be as yeah. stylus and as stylish. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I might even have a fingerprint Spare. sensor. Mm. Who knows? Yeah, it might. <laughs> 
Yeah, cool. There you go. All right, cool. And uh, we've got one more. Yeah, Michael go on. Bolt says, Andy. <gasps> yeah, that's right. Me? Andy. Yeah, how you. could you're how to could you. you say that digital zoom is lower quality than optical zoom? That will uh, make people think they're comparable and they're not. They are. They are both types of zoom. But um, digital zoom is just cropping into the frame and mm. optical zoom is actually zooming. Explain that. Explain that difference. Okay, digital zoom. If you're taking a photo of yeah. something, you are literally just cropping in um, and making a small section of the image artificially bigger, which isn't increasing the amount of pixels. Right. You see, is isn't increasing the quality. It's just making those individual pixels bigger, so it's really low quality. And digital zoom, zoom is way. what you get on smartphones. And digital zoom is what you get on smartphones, yeah. And things like the Nokia Lumia, because it has 41 megapixels, there are a lot more pixels to play with to do that zoom, but still keeping good quality. But optical zoom uses actual moving bits of glass as you would have on like a proper camera lens mm. and that allows still allows for the full resolution of a camera to zoom in mm. and that's right. why optical zoom is yeah. far better so ignore digital zoom basically if you see something that says yeah. digital zoom times a million just ignore it and if you yeah something. and if you see someone who's taking a picture of something on their phone and they're zooming in by pulling the screen you yeah. can be like hold it and Why then not? point and laugh. You, Knock it out of their hand. <laughs> take the picture, take the picture zoomed out and crop in later. Yeah, exactly. It's the same, exactly. It's the or you same could thing. do that. I'd have I'd just knocked it out of their hands personally, but there you go. Awesome. Um, Thank you, everyone. Please keep the feedback coming if it pleases you at facebook.com slash CNET or tweet us at CNET uh, okay. or email us at podcast at CNET.co.uk. Great. And finally, one last thing we need to talk about. Adventures in Tech. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. Of course. I think you spend your I, entire life I had, doing. Yeah, I had you guys doing that. You thought that I was... I'd forgotten. You completely forgot completely about completely it, didn't no. know what we were doing. What's it about this week? Yeah, Adventures in Tech, Adventures in Technology, or Adventures in Tech for short. Um, this time we t- <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for this being so succinct in telling us what your show is. Useful clarity. This, that's yeah, exactly. Really this time we're taking a look at the origins of the original Xbox. It's kind of like a superhero origin story, but for the console that made Microsoft cool. So this is a company best known for things like PowerPoints and that uh, paperclip that pops up in Microsoft Word, Clippy. But but no, sure. um, exactly. When 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 Bill Gates was like, "We're going to make a games console," everyone was like, "Quiet, Bill Gates, you're <laughs> drunk." Uh, but you know, but now bitten by the radioactive yeah, spider exactly. of, of, Go of back to jumping Halo over that gaming. Chair. Here we here we stand. They've created uh, Halo. Um, they you know Nintendo is in trouble. Their only rival in the game space really is Sony. So this is a, a short video feature looking at how that happened, and it also features the most arts and crafts that I've done. Um, Ever probably. Right. I've never I've never done anything involving like so much glue and foam as this. And so, tinfoil and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So watch and you'll spot that. what that is. Absolutely that's on YouTube or on CNET, look out for it. Yes. It'll be fun. And if give it search, a thumbs up on YouTube. Give it a yeah. thumbs up or a or a friendly comment or or share it with your friends. Yeah. Um, on yeah. Google Plus. Yeah, Find just... your friends on Twitter with the most followers and get them to retweet it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing to do. You might have friends on Twitter who don't have many followers and we're not so fussed about them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're not your real friends, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then, cool. Well, thanks very much, guys. Thank you very much, uh, Luke. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Thanks to our producer, Mark. Right, we'll see you next week. Bye.